Hey, you fifth graders, this lesson's for you. I'm sorry I haven't recorded much for you, but my fifth graders are in such different spots at all my schools that uh, I would have had to make 10 videos a week for everybody. But now we seem to be pretty close to the same place. So I am on page 22 and 23 in our books. And on 22, I want to start off with the piece Automatic Shift, number 60. It begins on the A string, fourth finger for my violin friends. Go circle. I'm going to do that with a better view here. So you can see the fingers move on the back side. That gets us ready to play pentascale number two. The pentascale is penta five scale goes by steps. Check this out. The scale is a musical shape that moves up like steps on a staircase. D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, D, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp, B, D. So the scale is the shape of the pentascale number two. And since it's just the five notes of E, D, C sharp, B, A, that's why they called a pentascale. Five notes. But the second half of pentascale number two is called arpeggio. I know it kind of looks funny, but let's talk about this one. Arpeggio? No, arpeggio. The shape of arpeggio is a note that skips, kind of like a scale, but just a little different. Let me show you something. Arpeggio goes E, C sharp, A, C sharp. Notice that we skip D and B when we do this. E, C sharp, A, C sharp, E, C sharp, A. So it's helpful to remember that an arpeggio moves in the directions like a scale does, but it skips every other note. So here's my pentascale again, playing all the notes of the scale. And now here's my arpeggio, which starts on the first note, but skips. Skip D, C sharp. Skip B, open A. Skip B, C sharp. Skip D, I'm on E. And if we can get that fast with it, there's no piece we can't play. Once you can do pentascale number two and the arpeggio, you can play cruise control. And then tonga walla, dreidel, and it's the blues man woman folks that I like to call it, you can do too. Fifth graders, little lesson about it's the blues, I like to call it it's the blues folks. Because I don't like to call it just it's the blues man. There's more than 50% of the world that's taken out of that one. We need to include everybody. So it's the blues, folks. So you know how in measure two, there's three rests there. And in measure six, there's three rests. And in measure eight, there's three rests. And then measure nine and 10, there's two rests. And then the last measure 12, there's three rests. I think of that as an opportunity to do some improvisation, a solo. Here's how you do it. First of all, let's get our, t our notes together we can use for a solo. In It's the Blues Man, I think the notes A, G, and E, whether it's this one or this one, are great solo notes. So, it's the blues man from the beginning. You might try this. Now, I added some extra notes on top of that, but every time you have some rests in there, you can do a solo. Sometimes I like to do a wrong note solo. This is a really fun activity too. 
So he plays It's the Blues Man like normal. And then he play the weirdest note, the wrong note. I know it can sound kind of terrible there, but it's also kind of fun to play a silly wrong sound while you play all the right notes of It's the Blues, folks. Well, good luck with page 22 to 23. This is our goal this week, fifth graders. Let's get to it.